NASCAR is on a hot streak, ladies and gentlemen. They're on a hot streak. Two really good races in a row. Didn't think it would be a, like, a, a, a great race, you know, midway through. And then Darlington, the lady in black, the good old and trusted. And then NASCAR, next gen car, old track, tire wear, and my favorite. My favorite, guys. Drivers going at it. Rubbin's racing. Tempers flaring on pit road after the race. I love it so much. Yes, give it to me. Yeah, I'm borderline crazy, honestly. Yeah, it's not. I'm not a normal person. By the way, guys, happy Mother's Day to all your mothers. So my mother as well. The, my, my entire family is currently in Europe right now. So, that, you know, it is what it is. I, I am away from them. But uh, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Uh, if, if you care, tell your mother I said happy Mother's Day. Say that, you know, Real Radman wished you a happy Mother's Day. And they're going to be like, who the hell is that? you know what it'll be okay just happy mother's day to all the mothers out there uh without them we literally would not exist so uh, thank you to all the moms out there for creating this world literally like literally so uh thank you guys so much and hopefully you guys are all having a fantastic day i want to give a shout out to all the patreon members because i always freaking forget to give them their shout out in race reviews i'm always like so eager just to get right into the race uh, so shout out to all the Patreon members as always. If you want to support the channel directly, check out the Patreon link in the description below. Now let's talk about uh, the Goodyear 400, or as I like to call it, whenever there's a Darlington race, I want to call it the Southern 500, but it's not the Southern 500. Coming off last week at Kansas, was NASCAR going to be able to follow it up? Probably not. Like, like that's one of the best races uh, you'll ever see. I think it ra ranked number one in uh, Jeff Gluck's poll, like of all time. So that was really cool. Um, with top two, uh, greatest finishes you ever seen. You know, just going back to that, by the way, because I said I needed a little bit of time to sleep on it, to let it, like, simmer, uh, you know, like a nice little stew. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's the greatest finish of all time. That's just my opinion. I think 2003 Darlington is the greatest finish of all time. Uh, if you actually want to compare the races, like, I probably would probably put the Kansas race above the Darlington race. I would say uh, Darlington 2003 is still number one to me. I think I'd put it number two. It's actually a lot closer. It might be number three for me. I don't know, but it's definitely not number one. Um, Kansas uh, 2024 for me is either number two or number three. And the only one I would actually put above it is uh, maybe the 2007 Daytona 500 because it's the Daytona 500. Uh, Mark Marr and Kevin Harvick coming to the line, the, the photos, the wreck behind them. Honestly, because it's the Daytona 500. Like, you know, it's the Daytona 500. That's one of the most iconic finishes of all time. So um, that might be number two, but it's somewhere in there. Uh, that's just my opinion on the Kansas race. Let's go to this race. Uh, early on, I actually thought the way I thought I would talk about this race, essentially, I really like stage one and then stage two in the middle of the race. Eh, not really, because stage one. Uh, to me was actually really cool like I, I, I you know everyone kind of settled in and then you had a green flag pit stops when do you want to pit and then uh, the, you know the tire wear was awesome Darlington being the racetrack that it is next gen car was doing well dirty air was not obviously a factor but it was it was uh, okay you know Darlington you could use multiple lanes as well to kind of try to get around your opponents uh, and the top five were like right there together and you had guys coming and going different leaders Tyler Reddick uh, Brad Keselowski Kyle Larson William Byron up there all short pitting and stuff like that in the end Kyle Larson would win stage one I thought that was a really good stage and then stage two comes around and there's a few cautions you know within it you have the Ryan Blaney incident where William Byron decides to take a three wide on uh, Truex and Blaney and then William Byron uh, slides up and and ends up putting not in the wall but he ends up you know putting Truex into Blaney and that puts Blaney into the wall Blaney you know rides the wall collects Truex front end uh, those guys you know really struggled from that point on because of the damage Blaney was basically out of the race Truex could carry on but yeah w William Byron just uh being aggressive and and I'm not going to criticize him this is just as I've been telling you guys about William Byron he's developing that killer instinct but in another way that could also not be a good thing and what I mean by that is William Byron has been on um the side of fault for a couple of incidents now like it's it's becoming a little bit of a trend where William Byron is involved in these incidents and and he's the one kind of causing them that is what I mean by he's developing that killer instinct as well as the killer instinct of winning races he's just overall becoming a much more aggressive race car driver um don't know you know what that's about he's becoming very aggressive and good for him uh but you're gonna have to you know hold it when you step over the line yeah i'd actually like to hear i well, obviously i don't know you know um if he said anything after the race but i would like to hear him kind of apologize for that because that was kind of a 
it wasn't like uh, like 50 laps to go there was like a hundred and how many laps like 190 something laps to go something like that when it happened uh is it really necessary to take it three wide not even for the lead three wide on a restart with that long to go in the race and then you end up causing that i don't it, i feel like he should apologize for that that felt like uh he crossed the line a little bit there in my opinion and then we carry on with stage two and stage two to me was a little bit meh I enjoyed the more green flag run of stage one and all that. And stage two, a few cautions here, a few cautions there to kind of, I didn't know. So I thought the race was going to kind of peter out. And then you go into the final stage and Tyler Reddick is pulling away. And Kozlowski's trying to keep up with him. Larson's chilling there. Byron's chilling there. And it was kind of the same guys up there all race. You had, you know, uh, you had Kozlowski. You had Ty Gibbs, who I haven't mentioned, but Ty Gibbs was up there all day long. Uh, William Byron, Tyler Reddick, Kyle Larson. Uh, guys like that were always up there and uh, you know back behind them it was you know sometimes it was uh, 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 what's his name uh, Denny Hamlin was there Joe Logano was running a little bit better um, and some other guys would always be around there but that top five or six was always kind of set so I was like ah, I think this race might peter away I look away for five minutes I'm not even kidding about this I look away for five minutes this is with about what uh, 60 to go somewhere around there 70 to go. I look away for five minutes. I'm on my phone just looking at some things. Arsenal won today, so I was very happy about that, right? I turn back, and they were on a side-by-side, -side, right? I go away. It's a four-second lead. Fox goes side-by-side. -side. I'm on my phone. I wasn't really paying attention to the TV. Next thing you know, I see Keselowski's in the lead. I literally was like, how many laps went by? I, I, I didn't miss that much, right? I missed one side-by-side -side commercial. And within that time, it went from a four-second lead to Keselowski was in the lead. And I swear to God, I was looking around like, am I in real life? Like, what? And I have YouTube TV, so I rewinded, like, to see if I was, like, delusional or not. And no, it was a four-second lead, goes to a side-by-side -side commercial, and next thing you know, Kozlowski takes the lead because Reddick just got caught up in lap traffic, and Kozlowski had the better long-run car, of course. We saw that throughout the race. But it just shocked me. I was like, okay. So at that point, I was like, all right, we got a race here because I don't really know how this thing's going to play out. I thought Reddick might be able to, you know, hold the lead for a while, see how it goes. Green flag pit stops hit. Uh, Kozlowski, Reddick going at it. Uh, and then Larson brings out the caution because Larson hit the wall right before green flag pit stops gets a uh it comes down pit lane car was kind of all messed up and then it uh he basically blew a tire um and then he ended up being wrecked so that sets up the end of this race and that was uh very fantastic because Tyler Reddick gets back in the lead he has the first pit stall due to qualifying so he's been doing that from the majority of the race gets back in the lead has the better short run car. You think Tyler Reddick is going to win this race. Keselowski and Reddick side by side for like four laps straight off the restart. Just as close as possible. And this is the type of racing that is not possible in the Gen 6 car. Uh, in the next gen car at Intermediate Tracks, we have seen this. And it's because it does not have the amount of skew or, you know, the offset in the, you know, the way the car is constructed. It is a symmetrical kind of car. So the days of getting underneath someone and then taking you know, the air off of your rear spoiler and you just snap around like a little fish uh on a on a bait that's not happening uh so you're able to really race now when you're side by side when you're front and behind different story when you're side by side you can really really race so they're racing hard not wanting to give it up and i'm sitting there like i think they're burning their tires i don't know if one of them is going to win this thing because kozlowski was burning his stuff i think reddick was burning his stuff and then a man we haven't really seen all day. He was he was running pretty well, but he wasn't really up there. Chris Busher. Chris Busher's in third at this moment, and he's just like looking at him. I thought there was a moment he could have taken three wide. He decides not to. He decides to try to give a bump to Brad Kozlowski, his boss. Doesn't really work. Kozlowski eventually, after battling so long, puts Tyler Reddick in the wall. That slows both of them down. Busher goes old, you know, comes off turn four, pulls off the little three wide move, clears into turn one. Chris Busher's in the lead. And now I'm like, okay, this is very interesting. Tyler Reddick is still okay after he hits the wall. Kozlowski's in third. We know Kozlowski has the best long run car. We don't really know what Busher got because Busher hasn't really been in the lead all day or even really competing for the lead. He's been in, he's been doing well, but he has not been up running towards the front front at the head of the field. So can he hold off Tyler Reddick? Tyler Reddick is now gaining on him. We're coming around 10 laps to go. Tyler Reddick's gaining. Kozlowski's gaining. Now it's a three-way battle for the lead. Pretty much Kozlowski just lurking. Tyler Reddick goes for the slide job. And he messed up the slide job. And uh, unfortunately, that put Busher in the wall. And this is actually the most, in my opinion, the most shocking thing about this race. I was very surprised that when Reddick...
puts Busher in the wall by accident by the failed the failed slide job. That Reddick ends up getting a flat tire, and then Busher. I, I have to double check because um, I wasn't on Twitter at the time. Was it a toe link bend or was it a flat tire? Can you guys let me know in the comments down below? Um, because if it was a flat tire, I'd be very surprised. Were both of them toe link bends? I thought the Reddick one was a flat tire. Um, I can go on Twitter right now and check, but I'm not really sure if they're, if it's going to let me know. Because right now, it's just a bunch of videos of uh, Chris Buescher going up to Tyler Reddick. And, uh, you know, they're uh, having a nice little discussion on pit road. Yeah, I can't find out. I can't find out if it was a flat tire or if it was a toe link. But what I was saying is, like, I was surprised when I saw both of them go side by side. These cars are, are tanks, so you should be able to race like that and kind of get away with it. And uh, I didn't think it was the hardest contact even that Busher got into the wall um, that and that Reddick got, hit him. And, and it just, yeah, th they both just immediately, Reddick went backwards and Busher had a problem and had to come down pit lane. So that was kind of, that was very surprising to me to see that happen. The, the odds of that happening, very low, to be honest. I think nine out of 10 times they do that exact same move. And I think both of them get away with it. This is the one out of 10th time that both of them end up having an issue. Very, very weird. But this allows Brad Keselowski, who was running third, uh, to take the lead. Um, Ty Gibbs trying to make a run from behind, but is not able to get there. And Brad Keselowski, after 110 races of not winning a race, he ends up winning at Darlington in another classic for NASCAR. NASCAR, like I said, NASCAR is on a hot streak. And then to make it all better, to add just a little bit more sprinkle of exactly what I love about NASCAR, just, just add the seasoning right there. Chris Buescher is freaking hot. And listen, guys, it was hot. It's South Carolina. We're in in May now. It's hot out there. It's not very... You're in that race car for three hours. You're burning like a little crisp, all right? You're like a little Dorito, uh, like a nacho cheese Dorito, and they're putting like spicy hot seasoning. You're burning in there, okay? They're throwing you in the air fryer, and you are burning. So, um, yeah, if you have a, uh, a chance to win... Your head is going to be hot. Trust me, it's going to be as hot as me when Manchester City won the league on Sunday because they are freaking robots and are the greatest manager in the world and uh, <coughs> 115 uh, fraudulent chargers that we have to uh, take. But anyways, yeah, my head is going to be just as hot as that as it was with Chris Buescher um, for him. Uh, he goes up to them and Fox picks up the uh, audio. And shout out to Fox for not bleeping any of it. Thank you very much um, because you can actually hear it perfectly and it's just basically, you know, I don't want to um, curse on a on youtube because i don't want to get demonetized but uh you know reddick is basically just saying can my camera stop glitching reddick is basically saying i effed up i effed up i'm sorry i effed up i effed up like over and over and over and over again uh and busher is just like just wants to like grab him by the neck and just probably like throw him into the car but um yeah, what was actually really cool to hear is that uh, Busher was saying basically like, D I don't have that sticker pointing to the race winner sticker. So Busher really needs to get into the playoffs. We don't have that sticker on our door right now. Huh? We need to be better. I don't have that sticker on my door. It needs more. It needs to be better. Um, and so he really wanted that win and that's why he was very upset. And hey, that might be a point that everyone can throw back at me because I am a very big proponent of 10 drivers in the playoffs. Get rid of winning your in. Well, if you get rid of winning your in, does, does this happen? Because Chris Buescher is literally pointing to like, I need to win this race. I still think this happens anyway, because you naturally want to win. But, um, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I, I was just thinking about that. Like you guys guys should throw that back at me because now, you know, that's, uh, Hey, Radman, look, if you don't have winning your in, this wouldn't happen. You know what? Fair play. It might not. I still think it would, but fair play. But uh, that was very cool to hear the audio from them. Uh, and yeah, Reddick effed up. Now, the good thing about this is that Reddick is a racer. And us fans and a lot of people in the garage area respect Tyler Reddick. So, uh, you know, it's it's not... I don't know actually anyone in the garage area. Actually, if we, we bring up, you know, maybe a younger Joey Logano. And Joey Logano does that to Chris Buescher. You know, there's a track history there. With, with Tyler Reddick, it, there's not really a history. Like, he races aggressively, but he is clean. And, um, you know, you see Chris Busch at the end. Once the temperatures come down a little bit, Christian Busch is like, we've raced for so long, we've never had any issues. So, like, you know, it, they know. Like, it, it'll, it'll, you know, they'll, they'll make up. It's okay. Uh, they were going for the win. And like I said, 
I was surprised that it hurt both of them like that and knocked them out of the race. I genuinely thought you can make side-by-side -side contact, a little bit of wall contact, like Kozlowski and Redick did a little bit earlier, and be okay. I really didn't think the contact was that hard, so I was very surprised when I saw Chris Buescher and Tyler Redick both off the pace and both having to come down pit lane. That really shocked me. So um, I'm pretty sure it probably shocked Busher and Redick as well. Uh, it's just Redick, Busher was obviously very pissed off, so it is what it is. But in the overall sense of it, fantastic race at Darlington. Um, in my opinion, uh, just another classic NASCAR race. Uh, this is what NASCAR is, guys. Tire wear, 45 lap tire runs for your, 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 your car can't drive anymore. Um, great battles for the lead. Uh, great finishes. Um, this is, uh, NASCAR's on a hot streak right now, guys. Really, really awesome. Now, if you excuse me, right, I, I have to go, you know, just, I'm cooking my dog some food, so I need to quick, I'll be right back. I know, I I'm sorry. All right, I'm back. Let's pull up the race results. You have Brad Keselowski, Ty Gibbs, shout out Josh Berry, and Br Chase Briscoe, uh, two SHR boys. This wasn't really that much of a surprise. We saw the Fords were very strong in 15 lap averages in practice, so... It wasn't a huge surprise to see the Fords really well today. But again, still, shout out Josh Berry, shout out Chase Briscoe, shout out SHR for finally showing up a little bit. Uh, but it is the Ford of RFK, Brad Kozlowski winning the race. Big congr congratulations to him. Denny Hamlin comes home in fourth. William Byron comes home in sixth. Bubba Wallace, uh, pretty quiet day, but ends up bringing, out, bringing it home in seventh. Same thing for Alex Bowman, pretty quiet day. Um, and for a lot of these guys, it was, you know, they weren't really, they, they got a lot better, you know, be better finishes than where they were running for the majority of the day because of some of the incidents. Um, Justin Haley, great top 10 for that 51 team, again in the Ford. Michael McDowell, again in another Ford. Uh, 10th place, the Fords really were on it today. Uh, Ross Chastain in 11th. Chase Elliott in 12th. I'd, he was running literally below 20th the whole day. I don't really know how he ended up in 12th. Christopher Bell still kind of struggling a little bit um, in 13th. Graxon in 14th. Gilliland, Todd Gilliland actually had a really, really, really strong run in stage one, uh, but brings it home in 15th. LaJoy, Priest, Kaz Grala, Eric Jones, Austin Sindrick round out the top 20 with Logano, Harrison Burton, Stenhouse, Suarez, Truex, Josevar, Kyle Busch, and Austin Dillon. RCR just really, really struggling right now. Uh, Derek Krause, Chris Buescher uh, is in 30th, and Redick is in 32nd after the incident. Um, those two obviously should have been further up with Kyle Larson as well, should have been further up. Uh, Zane Smith uh, involved in a crash, just a self-spin coming off turn four, and Ryan Blaney involved in that William Byron incident, uh, and he f ends up finishing in last place. And that is going to be that. Uh, I'm going to end it here because I don't, you know, it's Mother's Day. Everyone enjoy. Hopefully, you're all having a fantastic day. Leave your comments down below. Shout out to NASCAR for del delivering two great races in a row. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, you guys are enjoying your day. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you're not already. Subscribe if you're new. We're still not at 80,000. Please, get me to 80,000 subscribers, guys. Please, take care of yourselves. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.